got more of these than I remembered having. <laughs> these are all of my various accreditations to some of the events that I have photographed. And today we are going to be talking all about how you go about getting hold of these. How about you go about getting accreditation to go and photograph events. I think it's going to be a great video. Let's go. I've got some cool ones down here. I've got some England stuff which I've done. I've got my first ever NBA game which was a big one for me. My first ever NBA game. Got some basketball stuff. Uh, I've got my first... Uh, oh, that's the Netball World Cup. That was a good one. I've got my first BBL one when I did my first BBL season. Some British basketball. My first Champions League game as well I've got here. I've got some cool stuff. Got some cool stuff. Why have I kept so many, you might ask me? I, I don't know. I guess because the memories are really cool and especially some of the bigger ones. You'll notice I've kept a lot of the bigger ones. I don't necessarily keep all the kind of week to week ones that I do, but certainly some of the bigger ones. And those of you with the more eagle eyes will notice I've had them hanging up like like here in the background of my videos in pretty much every video that you've seen in this space. So if you're excited for this video, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps me out loads and loads on my video, helps me out loads and loads on my channel as well. And I really, really appreciate it. If you guys are new around here, think about subscribing. Loads of other videos coming on my channel that I think you might like if you enjoy this video right here. So today we're talking about media accreditation, how you go about getting it. And I'm gonna try and cover a few of the different levels of sports that I shoot or I have shot in the past and even some of the ones that I don't because I think those might be interesting for you as well. Going to talk through the different levels of football right here in the UK. Also going to touch on basketball because I do a fair bit of that myself. I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about some other bits too. So no messing around. Let's get straight into this. Let's talk about football. Now I'm going to work my way from the bottom upwards because that's kind of the journey that most people would sort of photograph stuff in, right? That's kind of where you start. And by start, I mean lower league football. So basically everything below National League, your local kind of Sunday leagues, your local Saturday leagues, stuff like that. As a general rule of thumb, there are no set accreditation processes for those leagues. I wouldn't however recommend that meaning you just turn up. I would get in touch with the club. So if you get in touch with the club that plays in that league, tell them you're interested in coming down and taking some photos. I would even try and sweeten the deal by saying, look, of course, I'll share a couple of the photos with, with you. And chances are you will find that very often they say, yeah, cool, no worries, come on down. And that's great. That gives you an opportunity to go down, take some photos, practice getting your photos as good as you possibly can for your football. And I think you might be surprised. Every now and again, it will even give you an opportunity to sell a photo to players or families of players, stuff like that. So really worthwhile getting into that if you're not shooting football at all. Now, alongside local league football, you've got stuff like junior football. Now, there's a little bit of a myth that in order to be able to photograph any kind of junior football, you have to be like DBS checked and stuff like that. That That's actually not true because you're not interacting with the kids. You're not like coaching them or, or working directly with them. So you actually don't. But again, especially with any kind of junior football or junior sports, you definitely shouldn't turn up uninvited. You should always speak to the team. You now, speak to the court, school, college, stuff like that. Some of them might might want to do a DBS check on you if you're going to be working with them in any way. And of course, if you're up for that kind of stuff, that's absolutely fine. I certainly have done a couple of DBS checks and especially with all my work I do with Fulham Academy, uh, of course I have to be fully DBS checked. So sometimes you will need to do it. Junior events are another great place to potentially sell photos to family members and things like that. So well worth choking those out too. So beyond that, you're kind of looking at National League football. Now those leagues have been called various things. I believe right now they're the Vanarama National League. Now this level of football does require some kind of set accreditation to be able to turn up and take photos. Now what I will say respectfully towards this level of football, it doesn't seem that hard to get the accreditation. And by that I mean from doing a little bit of my own research on the website, it seems as though provided you can prove you've got liability insurance of up to £2 million, and provided you can show that you're taking the photos for some kind of general purpose, they seem to be okay with giving out the accreditation. Your best place to find out more for this one will be to look on the Vanarama website, which I've got right here. Go check it out. You'll have a look and you better find more about the league and there's contact details on there and stuff like that. Again, though, even if you've got that accreditation for that league, you would always want to speak to the clubs before you just turn up. You wouldn't want to just turn up, A, because it makes it awkward and B, it's just the polite thing to do, right? Should probably touch on insurance at this point because I mentioned it just there. There's probably a whole nother video you could make about insurance, but in order to photograph really any level of football, 
football. It is so, so important that you have insurance. I actually have insurance for myself. I have public liability insurance and things like that. And various levels of football will require you to have different levels of public liability insurance. A lot of the things in this country require two million pounds, such as the basketball and the National League we just talked about. Some things require more, like five million pounds. Although we're talking about massive money in terms of the insurance value, the insurance isn't that expensive to get. If you shop around a few different countries, search for photography insurance or just search public liability insurance and you better get it for a good price. Sometimes just a few pounds a month will cover you for a basic setup. But really, really important. You shouldn't try to photograph any level of organized sports without public liability insurance. You don't want to get yourself in a situation when you're in close proximity to a playing surface and maybe you end up having some kind of a collision or in some way involved with the game. Maybe you get injured or worst case scenario in terms of insurance, you injure somebody involved in that sport and you don't have your own insurance. Absolutely shouldn't be doing that. Really, really important. Right, enough talking about insurance. How do we get into these events? Let's carry on. So the next thing up would be uh, like league football. So kind of, I guess, the EFL, Championship, League One, Two, and everything like that. And in fact, I'm actually going to group this in with the Premier League because they're all covered by the same system. And that's called Dataco. So Football Dataco, the website, you can go check it out if you want to, football-dataco.com, and you can read a little bit more. But in very simple terms, Dataco covers all the photography rights for the Premier League and all of the national leagues in this country. That means that in order to photograph any of those games, you have to be shooting under a Dataco license. So how do you go about getting a Dataco license? Well, there's various different ways in which you might be able to do it. The first and, and the easiest way is to go and shoot that game under somebody else's Dataco license. Now that could be done in a couple of different ways. Number one could be working for the club. So it might be that you work for the club, they get you to cover a game and then you are covered underneath their Dataco license. You'd be named on their license and then you're covered and of course the club would organise your accreditation to be able to get you into the game. The next way is to work for an agency or news outlet that has their own Dataco license. Now, this is what I do for information, probably a good way to uh, to see kind of the level that it's at. They will arrange the license for you. You get it yourself. It's like a physical license with your photo on it. And then that enables you to get into games. Now, even then, when I say get into games, you don't just turn up. You have to be booked and you have to be given a slot because not everybody who has a Dataco license can actually get into the game at one time. And there is a website like a booking portal um, where the Dataco license holder can go in and book people into games so like my agency goes in there and they book me into games now of course the the downside so to speak for working under somebody else's data co license is that you don't own the right to the photos the copyright for those photos will sit with the club or will sit with the agency that's the case with a lot of my photos sometimes you'll see photos on my instagram page for example and that will have a watermark of the agency i shoot for that's because the agency actually own the copyright to those photos they know that i share them on instagram i don't do it secretly but I still have to use that watermark. So of course I suppose that then rolls on to well how do you go about getting your own data co license so you could go shoot images you own the copyright and you can try and sell those images directly. Well this route in my personal opinion and that's all it is is the hardest way to do it because there are a few requirements that you have to meet in order to be able to apply for a data co license and those requirements are there to demonstrate that you are a professional published photographer. And so that means in order to apply for a Dataco license to the championship and leagues one, two and down, uh, or, or those leagues anyway, you have to have had 15 images published in regional or national press. That can also be uh, online news outlets that would be the equivalent to national or regional press. And the really important thing is that you need to be able to show the cuttings or the screenshots of those photos being used and you will need to be able to demonstrate that you were paid for their use. If you want to apply for a Premier League license that then becomes 30 photos and they have to have been published in national press. Regional press is 
isn't good enough for Premier League photos. And again, you will have to be able to demonstrate that you were paid for those 30 Premier League photos in national press. And whichever one of those licenses you're applying for, those 15 or 30 photos have to have been within the previous 12 months prior to your application. Now you see what I mean? That's not easy to achieve, right? That would be quite difficult to achieve. Certainly I couldn't demonstrate that right now, or certainly at least not images that have been shot underneath my own right, because of course images that have been published that have shot underneath someone else's Dataco license, I could not use towards those 15 or 30. That's why most people who go and shoot for agencies are shooting underneath their Dataco license and not their own. I should say, however, I mean, I've certainly looked into the detail of, of how you could go about getting it and certainly you could be successful doing it. There are plenty of news outlets that would use National League photos and certainly you could build up, if you work hard on National League games, you could build up 15 or even 30 National League photos used in regional papers and then demonstrate that they were paid for. So you absolutely could meet those requirements if you wanted to work towards it. Okay, so that pretty much covers football. Let's move on to basketball. You guys know I shoot a lot for the BBL, the basketball league in this country. So how do you go about getting accreditation for the BBL? Well, one of two ways. Number one is that you would be a club photographer. So I'm a club photographer for the Surrey Scorchers, and that means that I apply for a license based on the fact that I am the club photographer. Now, that's still my own license. It's underneath my name, and that means that I own the copyrights for all of those photos. Prior to being the club photographer I had my own BBL accreditation and either way whichever way you apply for it it's you that's named on that accreditation and you own the copyright for those photos. How do you go about getting it? Well you go onto the BBL website you look in their media section and it gives you information for how you can apply but there are a few requirements. You will need to be able to demonstrate that you've got your own public liability insurance and you'll need to be able to demonstrate that you are actually a photographer working for a genuine media or news outlet and by that I mean you will need to be able to provide proof of your previous work being used maybe in papers or a website something like that it doesn't have to be basketball though it could be football or really any sport at all but whether you're applying for yourself or working for a club it doesn't really matter you still would need to meet those same requirements so let's just quickly touch on a couple of the American leagues and I'm not going to claim to know much about this so I'm just going to share uh, what I have found so far if you're looking at the States, it seems to be very similar as far as my research and a bit of Googling tells me. But what would be really, really great is for some of my American viewers, my American subscribers, comment below and let us know, guys. Tell us how it works over there. But from what I can see, it's very similar. It seems as though if you're looking at like smaller, maybe high school or college setups or more local leagues that you would apply by speaking directly to the organization. Beyond that, like high level college as in the NCAA or of course, course even like NBA basketball or NFL football it seems as though some of the websites like uh, Memphis Grizzlies was one that seemed to have something about applying for accreditation on their own website I noticed Dallas Cowboys did as well for the NFL but it seems as though generally they direct people towards the central governing bodies and I would imagine that is then probably a similar level of I guess difficulty to obtain that license as it would be for like the Premier League over here for me of course that makes sense as with all these kind of things they can't just let anybody in to photograph them. They need to better make sure that those spaces are reserved for professional working sports photographers. So it does make sense that it's not easy, right? It's not supposed to be easy. We don't want it to be easy. Otherwise, any old person could turn up and the people who should be there would never get in. So guys, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If you did want to go check out my Instagram and see some of these photos that I've been talking about, go check me out at Robson sport that's the best place to see my sports photos guys i really appreciate you watching and i will see you i will see you on the next video